Hey, what's up? High Spot here, and today, inspired by my recent literary adventures in the world of Hamlet, I am going to take a look at another game inspired by a classic story. This is An Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. This game is an adaptation of a short story that was first published in 1891 and written by an American author named Ambrose Bierce. I actually read this story in one of my college classes, my American literature class, and it really stuck with me. Uh, I think because of the time period that it takes place in, it concerns the Civil War, which uh, I've always found interesting. But the story itself is really engaging as well, even if you're not interested in that time period. I've seen this story adapted a few times, uh, including this game, which is probably the most unique version. I've seen it as an episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents, a TV show, and it was also an episode of The Twilight Zone. And The Twilight Zone episode was actually a short film made by French director Robert Enrico in 1962, and that short film won an Oscar in 1963 for Best Short Film. And then later, Twilight Zone picked it up and aired it as one of their episodes. So it's just a really interesting story all around. I'll put links down below for the short story because that's in the public domain now. You can read that at your leisure. And I'm sure you can probably find the Alfred Hitchcock Presents and Twilight Zone episodes online if you look hard enough. But back to the video game. This is an indie game made by a man named James Earl Cox III. And I remember first seeing this on Game Jolt a couple years ago. It was first published on Game Jolt in 2013. In February of 2013 and uh, you can find it on itch.io as well and I'll provide links for those as well but it is number nine in James Earl Cox the third's list of 100 games in five years I didn't realize this until I was looking up information about the games creator for this playthrough but uh, James Earl Cox the third has challenged himself to make 100 games in five years and an occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge is number nine in that list and he's only 10 games away. Uh, the five years is up on June 1st of 2017, so just in a couple months away from the time of this recording. So I may actually take a look at some of his other games, see how many of those I can get through before the June 1st deadline for his 100th game. Uh, it's really, really interesting. But anyway, let's get into an occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. So this is actually pretty cool just like this to let it sit here for a minute because if you have read the story it's it's a lot about feeling and the space and what the man the the man in the gray is going through um, because these like I said it, it takes place during the Civil War and so these are the soldiers from the north in the blue and I don't think that the the man in the original story was not a soldier, though. He was just a citizen, but he was, he did get in trouble with the Union Army, and obviously he was getting hung at the beginning of the story. And at the, the beginning of the story, he's, like, taking everything in, but as he goes a little bit further, something does happen, and the story goes, so let's get into it. Made by James Earl Cox III. Music by Foster K. White. Based on the story by Ambrose Pierce. And I remember this game being not so much a game, but just an interactive experience. Because I don't think you can lose... Well, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> I guess you can lose. Yeah, they're going to force me off. What if I can just walk into the gun? No, just pushes me, doesn't stab me. I don't want to go, sir. You don't push, I'll do it on my own. Oh. His wife and child. Ah, in the water. The rope broke. So I need to get out of here. Just use arrows, arrow keys. Gotta get away, getting shot at. Can I dive? No. They're just really bad shots. Memories of his wife. 
in his house. And this is the part of the story, and even through... I remember the Twilight Zone episode really well. It's very slow motion. A very a lot of nature shots. Really slow. Like, when he comes up from the water, he's taking everything in. And seeing, like, he was about to die, but now he's alive. And it's just him just taking it all in and being like, Wow, I'm alive, and look at these things, and look at that leaf, and, like, feel this water. It's all vibrant. More vibrant than ever. Because he is alive through a stroke of luck. It's actually a really powerful story. Whoa. Pick it back up and throw it. No. So close. I can't. Didn't, didn't quite reach him. Didn't quite reach him. See? Nature. Can hide. I don't think you can actually get caught though. Still, it's fun to play along like you could get caught. So that's what the story's really about, you know? Just kind of taking it all in right now as well. It's a nice little experience, but I don't think it quite captures the feeling of the short story or the either of the uh, live action adaptations. But I mean, anytime you have some sort of adaptation of some form of literature that's very uh, true to the source, I think it's it's pretty amazing. I don't think there's enough of that. I wouldn't consider like Dante's Inferno game to be uh, too accurate of a representation of the uh, source material. I can't really think of a whole lot of other games actually based on books and trying to capture it. I mean, you've got like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which everyone online knows about. But um, yeah, I mean, this is a this is a nice attempt at capturing the feeling, if not the story, because I mean, obviously it leaves a lot out, but it's getting that feeling of nature and the memory and being alive. It's almost like a Disney movie now. All these birds are gonna start chirping and breaking out into song. Oh, deer. Back up. Can I ride the deer? Nope. I just chase it away. That's great. Good job. You scared a deer. Maybe if I don't take a step, I'll just kind of scoot. Nope. Looks like I'm nearly home. Am I ready? Deer, come here. There she is. I almost don't want to. All right, let's go. And he's hung. It was all in his head. So if you haven't read the short story, then you just got it spoiled, but it's still it's still very much worth going and reading. It doesn't take that long, and it's uh, you'll you'll get more out of it than just watching this. So it's really powerful, I think. And so it just starts back over again. I mean, it's a really short experience, and um, there's not a lot to it. I would have maybe liked to have seen. If you could put maybe a little bit more about um, some more of the life-affirming 
themes, I think, that were in, like, all other adaptations of it. But, I mean, you still kind of get it, but it's almost kind of, like I said, it, it felt like a Disney movie with all the birds and stuff following me and the deer. Uh, maybe a little... I don't know. It's it's hard, you know? But I do like the interactive aspect of it, so you're actually moving him. But, of course, there's no danger of losing, so it's it doesn't feel all that tense, really. Um, like I said, I don't think there's any danger of losing. But, yeah. It's it's a it's a neat little game. Uh, I applaud James Earl Cox the Third's efforts on it, and I may have to check out some of his other ninety games that he's made so far, and maybe the last ten in these. He's making ten in two months. Is that real? Maybe the website hasn't been updated completely. But yeah, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go read, go read stuff, and I have been High Spot, and I'll see you next time.